Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day to all. So today we're going to resume with our energy balance uh, in reactive system uh, because as per lecture last time I have already discussed as well on energy balance in reactive system and we have looked at the introduction of um, some new terms that need to be included as well when you are actually cons performing energy balance. So here we're going to talk about energy balance in reactive system. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to perform energy balance uh, for reactive system uh, by performing mass and energy balance simultaneously. So what we have done in the past is actually we just look at performing energy balance. But here we wanted to see that how actually mass and energy balance can be solved simultaneously. Before we proceed with that, I would like to actually to um, discuss with you about the um, uh, approaches of solving energy balance for reactive process. So perhaps there are actually many way, um, there are two methods that we can discuss. Um, first of all is heat of reaction method and the second one is heat of formation method. Heat of reaction method is the one that we encountered uh, from the last lecture. For example, if you can recall the example of propane combustion, so here we have propane and then we have uh, oxygen, okay, propane plus oxygen, and then um, and then we have um, CO2, and then we have water, okay, this is the product which is CO2 and water. Here, in this particular heat of reaction method is usually used for single reaction and when the heat of reaction is known. For example, like sometimes you are given a problem that a heat of reaction is already being given, okay, or it is just a single reaction. So this is much easier for us to use heat of reaction method. For example, like uh, if um, in this case a uh, propane combustion. So what you have to do is just first of all you need to state the reference state. So have to remember that every time when we involve energy balance for reactive process. It is always a uh, reference state is always chosen at 25 degrees Celsius as well as 1 atm. Okay, and then um, um, then uh, if let's say that uh, there is something else present in the system but it is not reactive, so we can choose any reference points at our convenience temperature. For example, in this case, um, it is actually propane plus air. So in air, you have oxygen and nitrogen. Nitrogen is not reactive here. So we can choose any point for the nitrogen um, reference states. Okay. Um, in this particular method, we introduce to you the in extent of reaction. Okay. Uh, this is what you have learned in chapter 4 before. And on which you can calculate the extent of reaction by having actually the number of moles of a specific species which is known uh, flow rate okay because for example like in if you could recall from the previous example uh, you were given the flow rate of propane and you were given the flow rate of um, air as well okay and when you further calculated you can choose either air or propane if let's say we choose propane here so the prop the amount of propane out is zero and then you have 100 mole per second comes in and divided by stoichiometric efficient of that particular propane which is 1 so negative 100 divided by 1 because it is absolute value so the extent of reaction is actually equals to 1 okay you can test also for other components here and you will get similarly the extent of reaction is equals to 1 and then um, from that particular extent of reaction, then you can calculate the enthalpy change. The enthalpy change here is actually the extent of reaction multiple with the uh, heat of reaction. For which heat of reaction, you can calculate uh, using this particular term, okay, which is the summation of the products uh, of the stoichiometric coefficient for each of this multiply with the heat of formation for each specific product. So here, this is actually the summation between the product of CO2, heat of formation CO2, multiply with 3, plus with heat of formation for water, multiply with 4. Okay, N minus uh, uh, the, the summation of the reactant product of, of the reactant of the product between stomach stoichiometric commission of the reactant, multiply with the heat of formation, sorry, of the reactant as well. Okay, so you plug in into this equation, then you'll be able to get the delta H. 
Here you will need to consider um, the use of uh, CPDT okay, as we discussed earlier. Uh, so this is where actually the heat of reaction method um, being used. So this, in order for you to know more about this, you may want to refer from the previous lecture. Okay, so you can know that how can we can use this particular method to um, calculate, okay, to calculate uh, heat of enthalpy of reaction by using this particular method. Another approach is actually uh, we use heat of formation method. Heat of formation method ni is when actually there is um, it is um, is a multiple reaction, okay, preferable for multiple reactions. For example, like there are uh, two or three reactions coming together. Uh, parallel or uh, parallel reactions coming together or there are single reactions where actually you may not know what is the uh, heat of reaction okay so instead of actually we have to calculate using the heat of reaction method we can use heat of formation but our material balance must be conducted on elemental basis so for example like you need we need to know how many carbon hydrogen and oxygen contained in the inlet and outlet of the stream okay instead of the component we choose component as the reference state at 25 degrees Celsius we now choose the elemental the element itself the carbon hydrogen and oxygen at 25 degrees Celsius and 1 atm as the reference state and then instead of uh, we use this particular equation for us to calculate the okay instead of we use this particular equation to calculate the um, delta H, we now just use delta H equals to this, okay? Where now there is a different in which you calculate the H out and H in because you need to include the term of heat of formation, okay? And then you need to also include um, you need to include um, the CPDT which is uh, from twenty two hundred and ninety eight which is twenty five degree to the temperature of the input to the reactor as well as uh, 298 degree to the temperature of output of the reactor okay so this is uh, how do you calculate um, uh, the h in and h output side so you can put inside this particular term i think there's something wrong here but never mind i think you have uh, recall for the fact that the equation is actually a little bit different okay so um what we're going to do next is actually we're going to look at different condition of um, outlet. Uh, for example, like in the common problems, uh, we need to know what will be the amount of energy uh, or heat required. Okay, and heat required from surroundings or from to the systems so that you can maintain the reaction temperature. But in there are other important problem as well for example like you were given input condition you were given heat input and output stream composition and then you need you need to find the temperature so this is one of the one of the condition maybe uh, you were also given heat input and the outlet temperature and you need to know what is the product composition and extent of reaction so this is also um, another way of things that you need to solve lah problem you need to solve okay so we stop here for now um, for the next video we're going to look at uh, some example and how we're going to solve it thank you